if tomorrow morning 50% of the Korean universities will suffer from cyber attack and the database will be deleted, what's going to happen? A student will walk in to his classroom, third year in the medical school, they're going to ask him, who the hell are you? We don't recognize you. I'm not talking about losing metadata of very important things, but very simple things can create a damage to the country. Um, as being a director of the Mossad for five years, between 2011 and 2016, uh, we had to, um, many challenges. And one of the bigger challenge was uh, cyber. As you might know, from my point of view, Cyber is a weapon, is a deadly weapon. I uh, uh, call cyber a silent nuclear weapon. And uh, it's not understood yet, or fully understood, what is the threat of cyber. The first question is, what is actually cyber? Because we are using this term for many things. And uh, cyber at the very beginning was a tool that uh, was before then used, we call it SIGINT, SIGINT intelligence. And uh, at a certain stage, when people start to use computers network, so the capability of intercept those networks was the first step in cyber. At the very beginning, never, no one thought it's going to be turn out to be a weapon. But as time was passing, um, uh, we found out, and major intelligence um, institutes in the world found out that uh, when you can intercept um, by attacking network, you can create a few things as well. Uh, besides collecting information, uh, so you can uh, uh, manipulate, uh, you can destroy, and you can do a lot of damage. And uh, as time was passing, um, those capabilities that at the very beginning was in the hands of only few services became quite common. Later on, we saw uh, in Israel that almost uh, all of our adversaries uh, started to get uh, cyber capabilities. And later on, uh, we saw it in the hands of uh, crime gangs, and uh, it became a very lethal weapon. Um, uh, in Israel, we were attacked, by the way, by um, all sides. Okay, starting with Iran, with uh, the Hezbollah in Lebanon, with Hamas forces, and uh, by some, uh, let's say, uh, big powers as well. As so we have, uh, let's say, borders uh, with uh, some of uh, our bitter enemies, uh, so we suffer from time to time from uh, missiles from uh, uh, those people there. And um, when you are hit by a missile, let's say a small factory, uh, within 24 hours, Actually, you get a check from the government that uh, should cover all the damage. But on the other side, if there is a cyber attack on the same factory that created damage that they should lock it down and stop to work for months, two months or three months, no one is covering the damage. So for the moment, when we are talking about governments, wherever they are, they don't realize yet that they are dealing with weapon. If you're going to walk to the ATM in order you would like to take some money, it will not work. Think about the subway that will stop. Think about the major airports. Think about the hospitals. So if in the past, when we were talking about war, so we had our military institution, 
We had our air force, ground forces, special forces, artillery, and war was bringing two armies, one versus the other. Clashes, blood, ruins, whatever. Today, if you don't want to take over the land of your opponent, you don't have to use those capabilities. And I remember when I had a session after I retired with a, a CEO of one of the car manufacturers uh, in this part of the world. And we were sitting there and asked me, please give an advice or tell me what can happen. So I told him, and it was five or six years ago, I told him, look, if uh, tonight you're going to get an email stating a list of 50 cars, okay, by chassis numbers, saying those 50 cars, by tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., local time, they will lose their brake system. Asking what, as a CEO, you're going to do? He looked at me, his face turned white, and uh, said, okay, please assist me. So if he tried to trace it, it means that he had to tell his people, okay, who knows where the car are. Part of them can be here, part of them can be in, uh, in, uh, in Europe or in the States. You don't know. Just that's going to make a fuss. Okay, so you can't locate them. Are you going public and tell we got a problem? That's going to be the end of this car supplier. It is for a long time, nobody's going to try to buy a car or to drive it. Uh, if he'll pay the ransom, he can find himself behind bars if he'll declare it, I don't want to see the figures in stock exchange next morning. So he is in a lose-lose situation. So what should we do? The first thing is that we must understand that those who have the responsibility to defend their premises are the CEO. A good CISO can assist them. But the responsibility, the full responsibility, is on their shoulder. And unfortunately, as much as I can see, CEOs do not understand it. Because when I mean responsibility is to be able to monitor the situation of the, my company, to understand how much money I should invest in order to secure it, to understand that actually in investing in security, in cyber security, the ROI is zero. If you are not attacked, just spend your money, like insurance. If you are attacked, there is no figure that can demonstrate what's the ROI. The second thing is to invest in cyber. At the very beginning, there was a thought that uh, you can protect your company by building a barrier around it. Okay, and we used to spend fortune on it. And I tell you, as being a director of the Mossad, we spent huge amount of money in order to try to build out, build up a barrier around our system. Today, it's irrelevant. Don't even try to do it. Because the world is flat, everything is connected. So to make the first move into the company network, there's no way to stop it. That's XM experience and our experience from the place that I came from. So we have to deal with it within the network or the bad thing to prevent it. So must understand, as we are dealing with a deadly weapon, 
we need the governments, we need the leadership of every country and of the civilized world to understand that we should put limits to the use of that weapon. If in the 50s of the last century, there was an American president named Eisenhower that uh, he realized that uh, if something won't be done and fast, this planet will evaporate after a nuclear attack that will occur. So he initiated the, what we are calling the IAA, he initiated the understanding of the global, of the world, of this planet, that using nuclear weapon is forbidden. And treaties were signed, and there was understanding among, among 99% of the countries on this globe that no one should try even to use this kind of a weapon. But when we are dealing with cyber, we don't see real leadership today, and uh, I'm afraid that we won't see it for quite a long time, unless something really deadly will happen. So from the time being, it's the responsibility of each of us, wherever he is. Today, we are carrying all our secrets in our pocket on our iPhone or our smartphone whatever it is. And we should understand that it's quite easy to read those secrets and to take advantage on us. It's quite easy to lock down factories, industries, school, hospitals, whatever you think of. And it's our responsibility to do the best that will never happen.